Hi guys. Well, I thought I'd do a video um, based on the emails and questions I get quite a lot, uh, as I usually do. And this one, or these questions, are typically about the day-to-day -day commute, um, which is what predominantly the electric car is used for. Cause they're not really a long-range, you know, vehicle either. So, um, so this is a day in the life of the electric car owner, um, starting from the beginning obviously the start of the day and going through until I get home at night and, and try to give you an idea of what it's like with any differences I'm not going to go through my entire day but the, you know, with any differences that you have with an electric car compared to a normal one it will probably make more sense as I go through it I'm kind of making this up if I, as I go along if I'm honest it may turn out to be the most boring video in the world but it's something that I would have found quite handy to know about before I bought it so yes, hopefully this will be helpful to someone, and uh, and be kind of like a record of the day. Um, differences: I'll be going to probably two, three different places, um, site to site for work, and then back home again. Um, and I'll kind of give you a, you know, if I come across anything that worth knowing about, I'll basically start videoing. So uh, so yes, hopefully this will be of use to at least three people in the world, and uh, I'll. Uh, See you when I start videoing, I suppose. Well, here we are. It's uh, early Monday morning, and uh, this is the start of the day for the electric car on, if you like. Um, the first thing I usually do with my serial is uh, use the Nissan Carwings app, which basically connects to the car and can tell me the state of charge and whatnot. But what I use it for is to turn the climate control on. Basically what that does is starts the heater going on the car which means by the time I finish that the car will be nice and toasty warm or defrosted if it's freezing outside or anything like that so this is a really 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 big bonus um, about having an electric car obviously the engine doesn't need to be on for the heater to work so right now it's using it's plugged into the house so it's using the house's electricity to heat the car up so you're not losing range um, so yes, this is a really, really big bonus for me for electric car ownership because you get into a nice warm car in the morning and no demisting needed, no defrosting if it's icy or anything like that. So yes, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I know you can't actually see anything, that's the charger. I just need to open the carriage door. It's a little bit dark today. Uh, so is the charger. There we go. Back in its little hole. From what you can see. All part of the standard day in the life of an electric car owner. Right. Me. And oh yeah, that's nice, nice toasty warm car. That's the benefit, as I said before, of the electric vehicle. Nice and warm. Right now, I might as well. You don't turn the car on, more boot it up. So, foot on brake. There we go, look at that. Obviously there's no noise yet because the engine doesn't run. And you sat still. So, I, I uh, shall set off to work and carry on. The rest of it's fairly self-explanatory, you know, drive to work. But I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do a day in the life of commuting, as I've said before, because that's uh, what most people will use an electric car for. It's more of a short-range vehicle. Um, so... Um, yeah, so if there's any, if there is any differences in the in the standard day for your average person when you're driving to and from work, then I'll I'll try and highlight it here. So this might be a really really boring video. I don't know. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. So. Right, so we're off. Um, 
it's five degrees outside, so it's not freezing, but it's pretty cold. Obviously, it's not in here because it's nice and warm. Um, with it being dark, a little bit foggy, blah blah blah, the uh, the heat obviously will be on um, most of the time I'm in the car. Uh, so this is, I guess, a, another good thing to know about uh, when it's cold, when it's winter time. Uh, we are in December now. The uh, using the heater a lot more and of course the heater does affect the range a little bit um, not massively on the second generation leaf on wood but it does have an effect uh, for example if the uh, car wasn't plugged into the house when I preheated it basically using the app then uh, I would have probably lost about uh, 4% uh, that would have been on for 20 minutes ish so I wouldn't use a preheat, obviously, if you were going on a long journey or anything without it being plugged into the house, but it is always plugged in because that's what I'd leave it doing overnight. So, you know, it's, it's, this is the sort of thing you kind of need to know, I guess, if you're going to use this as a everyday car. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's not too bad. Obviously, you'll be using lights, etc., a lot more in winter, but they're taken care of with the normal an ancillary battery, which is like the, the same type of battery you get in your average car. Just, you know, a square 12 volt jobby. So it's only the heater or air conditioning that actually affects the range. Lights, Bluetooth, the horn, um, you'd be surprised what I get. That doesn't affect the range of the car at all, it's just the heater and the air conditioning. So, um, so at the moment, 95% because this, uh, this is a, a decent run for me today. Um, I don't know off the top of my head how many miles I'll be doing, about 50. Uh, so, I'll uh, see you in a bit when anything interesting might come up. Well, I suppose this is the uh, first thing which your average commuter will recognise. Hang on. Traffic! Um, obviously, this is where the electric car can, uh, can excel a bit because when you're sat still, obviously the, the electric engine isn't on it doesn't do anything and um, so uh, kind of like a stop start on modern cars I suppose that's not that co you know, uncommon these days but uh, yes so you know if you are, do a lot of stop start traffic you will uh, save a lot of fuel if you don't have that type of car well so far I've been stuck in traffic for 40 minutes thanks to public transport blocking the roundabout so that's for another story Anyway, um, I've done about six and a bit miles in 45 minutes and I'm on 87%. Um, a lot of that's been uphill though, so that's not the usual amount of percentage you'd use. Um, so yes, on a bypass now, dual carriageway, nice and quiet. Another good thing about electric cars, quiet. So uh, yes, that's where we are so far. Well, I'm currently at 81% and uh, I've, I've gone, I'm, I'm at the top of the hill stuck at traffic lights now and I've set off and uh, it's going to be a, a mainly downhill from this point, which is another good thing about the electric car. Um, in a normal car, of course, if you're going downhill in gear, you'll use no petrol or diesel or whatever, um, or certainly very little. Whereas an electric car, of course, uh, it can regenerate uh, itself, so therefore it can charge itself up again. So right now, let's see if I can get the uh, figures. Uh, ooh, I'm generating seven kilowatts of electric. So that's that's the equivalent of a home charger, or the charger that you get like at Astas and things. So that's putting energy, electric, extended range back into the car. Um, so that's another benefit over a normal car. Um, I'll probably go up by the time we get to the bottom of this hill 1%, uh, which I know it's not a lot, it doesn't sound a lot, but over the entire you know day, over the whole commute, you might gain several percent back, which means you'll uh, be able to do another few miles. Uh, so that's good, all that kinetic wasted energy from uh, that normal cars obviously end up wasting, you get it back. So, yeah, that's exciting for you, then great. Right, I've 
finally got here after almost an hour it's taken me to do almost 12 miles thanks to public transport by the way the uh, train crossing that I didn't even go over has caused all this massive delay so yes if you use public transport yeah, yeah, yeah. oh forgot to mention uh, I'm on 81% after 12 miles um, that's with the, the heater going, fair bit of uphill driving, which obviously, um, like any other car, has an effect. So, uh, there we are. See how we go. See you in a few hours. Right. On to the next place. I've used the preheat again. Uh, obviously, not plugged into the uh, uh, house at the moment because I'm, you know, I'm not at home. And. Uh, uh, it's nice and toasty warm. Uh, I've got eight seventy-nine percent now, and on to the next place, which I think is another twenty miles or something. So, yes, I'll uh, report back when I get there. I don't know if it's myth worth making note because it's kind of common to a lot of cars these days. But uh, one thing that I quite like about the Leaf is that I can stream Spotify and whatnot through the Bluetooth. And uh, you know, all works with the car's control, so that's quite nice. Um, again, that's probably not really unique to electric cars in any way. It's a fairly standard feature, I suppose, these days. But I thought I'd mention it anyway. Those of you that uh, who's drive to work and whatnot or anywhere is, you know, urban. Uh, lots of stop starts, roundabouts, and whatnot. Again, this is another bonus, I think, when you compare it to a you know normal petrol engine, diesel engine car, it's the instant torque that you have with an electric motor. Uh, for those that don't really know what I'm on about, you know, like if you're, especially with a turbo car, turbo diesel, if you're, you know, in too high a gear, you know, you've got that, that turbo lag before you, you know, you, you put your foot down, nothing happens, and then, uh, and then all the power's there, uh, whereas with an electric car, you've got that full torque kind of almost any speed really um, certainly from zero revs you've got all the power the engine can give you in one go so you don't have to uh, you don't have to get the right gear I mean there isn't any gears of course as I mentioned before so it's like you're always in the the optimum gear um, when you, you know, compare it against a combustion engine I'll say so that's a real good benefit I think for those that just you know have really bothered about driving don't care what gear they're in obviously you can get automatics with a combustion engine but it still relies on what I find uh, dumb automatic gearboxes half the time you're in, you're in the wrong gear or it has to drop down before you can put your foot down things like that and um, so yes instant torque very much plus especially around urban driving towns roundabouts Put your foot down, coming onto a busy roundabout. Uh, you, you know, you'll, you'll never get it wrong, really. It's uh, point and shoot, I suppose. Well, you've probably noticed when you look, there's no handbrake here. It's a foot and brake. Kind of like the old Mercs. Push it with your foot. No real benefit of that one. Now, there is one huge benefit of this over uh, an equivalent combustion engine car, uh, for especially for commuting if you do a fair bit as I do. I, uh, I did 5,000 miles in the first three months, predominantly driving to and from work. And that 5,000 miles cost me 83 pounds in electric on my house bills. And that's measured by the home charger, that's not a guess. Um, so 5,000 miles for 83 quid. That alone, if the range isn't an issue, is worth getting one. It cost me probably 600-ish in, uh, in the other car. So for every 5,000 miles you do, you're saving, uh, let's call it 500 pounds. Uh, I do at least 20 a year. So I'm saving two grand a year in fuel bills just by it being electric. Uh, you can't really say better than that, to be honest, can you? 
Right, I'm at my final stop now. Um, before I head off home, and so far I've done about 33 miles. I've got 53% left. Um, so I'll, uh, yeah, nothing new to report. I'll speak to you once I've done this and start heading home. Right, it's half past four. I've got to go through the lovely city of Bradford. It's depressingly dark outside, as it is when you set off to work. I've got 53% left and probably about 30 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles. I'm not entirely certain, to be honest, to get home. Uh, and then that'll be it. And um, that will be the average day. And I would hope we'll highlight how good electric cars are for the daily commute and how cheap they are in the world. So, uh, yes, I shall uh, probably talk to you again very shortly. Or if I think of anything else. If not, when I go home. Right, um, well, I've finished now. I'm back home. 54 miles almost, 24% left on the battery, so I've used 76% for 54 miles. Um, <clears throat> that included a preheat at one of the stop offs I had. Uh, so, and I'd like to point out that I've been in non eco mode the entire time, uh, and I haven't driven around e economically, I've driven around in a normal fashion, if that's uh, a thing. Um, quite a lot of heavy traffic in parts as well. So yeah, so that that's basically uh, you know what what you typically get. It's currently ten degrees. It was five when I set off, so mild I would say for for December. Um, I'll just do the last bit of a, a day in the life of, just to show you what happens with electric cars when you get home. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, let me just take this off. Okay, right. So. We're done. And you know, like every other car you've ever owned, it beeps if the door open. Right. Still a nice practical boot. There we go. Perhaps it helps if I've uh, opened the garage door first. Now I would normally, uh, I would normally put the car in the garage, but I can't because of those. Right, there we go. So that's plugged in now, and in probably three, two to three hours, the car will be fully charged again. Uh, excuse me. Took that under there. Sorted out, right? So that's your average day in an electric car, in specifically the Leaf. Uh, it's uh, no different, really. I mean, the fact that this journey will have cost me what did I do? Seventy-six percent, so maybe two pounds for the entire time, the entire fifty-five miles. Uh, don't know what that'll be in your car, but obviously you can figure that out by looking at your miles per gallon. Um, so yes, that's it, really. Um don't know if this video is going to work, but uh, a day in the life of, I guess, is the best way of describing it. So, uh, so yes, I'll um, see you next time. And if you've got any uh, questions, comments, or even ideas for videos based on you know electric cars, of course, then please let me know.